Are you looking for a fun way to win up to 25 times your money this football and basketball season? Test your skills on Prize Picks, the most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Just select two or more players, pick more or less on their projections for a wide variety of stats, and place your entry. It's as easy as that. If you have the skills, you can turn $10 into $250 with just a few taps. Easy gameplay, quick withdrawals, and injury insurance on your picks are what makes Prize Picks the number one daily fantasy sports app. Ready to test your skills? Join the Prize Picks community of more than 7 million players who have already signed up. Right now, Prize Picks will match your first deposit up to $100. Just visit prizepicks.com slash bluewire and use code bluewire. That's code bluewire at prizepicks.com slash bluewire for a first deposit match of up to $100. Prize Picks, daily fantasy sports made easy. Support for this podcast comes from Frito-Lay in the 2023 Snack Bracket Championship. The Frito-Lay Snack Challenge is underway, and fans are voting on their favorite snacks to crown champion. We're talking about primetime matchups between the best 64 snacks in the land. Will Ruffles Ridges reign supreme? Can Doritos defend their dynasty? Or will Smart Food use their smarts for a surprise upset? Only you can decide. Get in on all the action for a chance to win up to $1,000 or a year's worth of snacks. Let your snacks be heard. Just go to frito to vote and enter for a chance to win. No purchase necessary. Three stakes ends April 3rd, 2023. Void but prohibited. Years worth of snacks awarded in the form of 52 coupons, each good for one bag of chips. See official rules at frito Hello, my loves. It's Kirk Henderson coming to you from Mavs Moneyball. Where you're joining me, group therapy. It's a it's a shade past ten o'clock. It's a Monday night. I've had a very strong cocktail, and I feel great. You know why I feel great? Because the Mavericks just won what, to me, is probably their most important win of the season the, to date. Uh, yeah, beating the crap out of Spurs is fun. Uh, it's also good for the soul. But the Spurs aren't very good. And beating the Spurs uh, is, is something that's going to matter over the course of the year. Is a, it's something I think we should talk about. But beating the Nuggets, who are a playoff and potential finals contender, no matter their problems at the moment, uh, feels great. And I think we should really revel in that. Uh, so, I, you know, let's – Josh Bo and I just talked for about 25 minutes. Lots of interesting things about this game. Really, really nerdy. Yeah, we want to get into it. Um, I, I'm curious where you guys want to start. Uh, and so remember, I'm going to invite people up on stage. And if you get invited on stage, call your name. Be sure to hit the unmute button before we chat. Um, as always, I'm going to attempt to bring on names I don't re- uh, see as often up first. So I hope you longtime listeners understand trying to trying to encourage and, and build some, some uh, loyalty and some audience here. So I want people to feel like this is a place where they can come. All right, coming up first, I see Jonathan. Jonathan, how are you tonight? Welcome to Group Therapy. Hey, how are you doing, Kirk? I am good. Um, I'm hearing my audio is a little weird, which means I probably need to push in my uh, earbuds. Well, your, yeah, was... your profile photo is incredible. Thank you. I saw it on Twitter, and I had to make it on here just for this. So. <laughs> like, like Luca, like, like I, I'm, I'm really into Luca with long hair because I think it, it's hilarious. But Luca with no hair is, is. I, I mean, it just proves that Jason Kidd's the right coach. Yeah. So, so what do we got tonight, guy? <laughs> so, um, so I have one thing I want to ask because, uh, so, uh, my game was blacked out tonight because it was on NBA TV. I'm just very curious. Mm. Um. KP seemed to have a good game in the box score, and I'm just wondering, uh, was 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 his game pretty good tonight? Like, because I know like the plus minus can be very misleading sometimes. So this is a fun question, and I think some other people should also come up and talk about this. Um, he got embarrassed by Bull Bull in the first half, nice. and then he did something that I didn't expect. He responded. And not only did he respond, he really played well. He played calm and under control. And he made the right play, not a few times, like a lot. Um, 
he was obviously five of eight from three, which you can see. The threes were nice. Uh, he hit a few long twos, which were nice too. But the thing that I was that I've been kind of harping on and stuck in my head was he got um, a Jokic on matched up. Probably it was like the left wing. They were far outside the three point line, and KP did the damn thing he always does, which is pump fake and then drive left. Well, Jokic stayed with him and then blocked him, but blocked the ball back to him. Instead of doing the thing I've seen him do for the past two years, which is throw up some kind of garbage bullshit shot, he collected the he collected back the, the, the block shot and passed it out to somebody else, which led to it's a minor play. But it's the sort of under control basketball play that I was really, really pleased with. And he and Luca uh, like frankly, Luca wasn't very good tonight, in my opinion. KP really and, and Tim Hardaway late really helped carry the team. So See, I was I was uh, curious because I mean, obviously looking at the box score, at least seeing Lucas shoot nine from twenty two, which isn't nothing. Uh, he, he he has those games where he shoots, you know, rather where you would not like him to be shooting, but uh, you know, he does other things. So I was I was just curious about that if uh, if it just seemed like a good win where everybody was in sync for the most yeah, part. Yeah, I mean. It, the th- The thing about the Nuggets is that they're really good, (laughs) Uh, even missing a bunch of dudes. They're well coached. Jokic is – is, and I hope people understand tonight why Jokic's defense was just sort of – he's looking like an MVP candidate again. Um, Yeah. And and so that's really something that that I was just wholly impressed with, that the Mavericks attacked him kind of relentlessly, but – you know, weren't stymied. Like they tried a lot of different stuff tonight. So it's interesting. I hope you're able to find like a way to watch this game because as I, I think some other people will talk about the Mavericks did a lot of weird shit, to be honest with you. Like there was a Dorian yeah. Finney Smith center lineup, which started the fourth quarter. Then Dorian and Dwight probably played as low a minutes together as the two of them had played all season. It was just, it was, it was, it was, it was really fun. It was a fun game. It was grindy. It was upsetting. Like it was all like it was kind of like why you watch sports, if that makes sense. It sounds like they're trying to fit. They're really starting to figure out that lineup, especially with because they started Dwight and everything. So I I hope they're starting to figure out what Dwight's there for. So but uh, I'm not sure what Dwight is there for, but I know Dwight will have a role this year because like he started out like ass last year and then was pretty important. For sure. For sure. For sure. Uh, that's all well, I thank can, you, Jonathan. That's you got anything else for us? Uh, that's all right, it. man. Uh, we'll come back. Keep drinking. I will. <laughs> yeah, and I'm sorry about the audio, guys. Like my headset, uh, just you know, sometimes with the green room, um, the audio just doesn't function. I, I we have this is like our most joined room of the season, so I apologize for that. Um, all right, let's see who else we got waiting out here. We got a number. Um, Mason, not seen you in here before. How are you tonight? Hey, how I'm are great. you? Great, thanks for joining. Unsuck now. Yeah, sounds great here. Um, so you know, tonight I want it so badly to be a Mavs coming out party, finally get the win versus a a good opponent, you know. Um, but it's they're they're down two starters, and it just it sucks the way that that game ended. You know, with you, you just wonder is Luca okay or not, and just the way the way the the end of the game went down is just really a bummer. You know, it, I, I mean, I very much know because um, one of my favorite things about Luca, the man's body is that of a, of Rob Gronkowski. Like he just has like this <laughs> pro wrestler's body. He's, he's obviously very athletic, but in unique ways. And like, he has cankles. He doesn't have like, he's not like this Uber athletic guy. So when he rolls his ankle, it's either like no big deal or very bad. Like there's no. Yeah. So hoping for the best on that one um, to comment on the last guys, uh, what he brought up KP, uh, one of the big things for me that I love to see was down the stretch, uh, his defense up against Jokic. And, you know, there's only so much you can do to a guy like him, MVP. Uh, you know, he's just going to make baskets. But he played some really tough defense. And I think one of the biggest things we need on this team is a guy that can go in and bang down low with some of the 
AD, you know, Jokic type of players that we're going to be facing in the West. So I, I love to see that from him. Great, great KP game. Well, what if the center we've been waiting for has been on the roster all along? And it's Dorian. You don't got to tell me twice. <laughs> what if it's Dorian Finney-Smith? <laughs> I'm not entirely kidding. Like, I don't necessarily think he needs to play more four, but, like, watching Powell guard Jokic was uncomfortable. Watching Dorian guard Jokic, I at least felt like there was something there going on. Now, you obviously can't play him there for, like, 25 minutes, but if you can steal, like, six minutes here and there every third game or something, I like that better than Willie Cauley-Stein. Did Willie play it all? Hold on, I need to check my box score. There is one good defensive possession uh, I remember with him against Jokic and maybe the second quarter, but um, he just still scored right over the top. You know, there's only so much you can do, but yeah. that was really encouraging to see from KP. The pass he had, um, a possession, and I think the fourth quarter, I, I believe you retweeted it as well, uh, just that pass back to Luca for the little lay-in. So good to see. Ooh, God. That, like, like it's the kind of thing where, like, when somebody try, like, if you play pickup ball as old, as old guys and somebody tries something fancy and it works and everybody in the gym is like, <laughs> oh, like, oh, I loved it. It was great. Yeah. Uh, so just great KP game. Uh, love the energy Hardaway came out with tonight. And Frankie, man, uh, I can't I can't get enough for him. That's that's the last thing uh, I want to leave with is just the the energy he's playing with on the defensive end, hitting big shots. Like what more could you ask for for a, a backup, maybe two guard? Wh- whatever he's playing has been great. Yeah, a- agent of chaos, Frank Milkina is a delightful addition to this basketball team. Even, you know, the, the pull-up jumpers, they feel I, I love being surprised every time they go in, uh, <laughs> which is fun. Hopefully he keeps that going. I, I don't think that's uh, going to go away. So, All right. Well, tonight. Yes, sir. I've been loving the podcast. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Have a good night. All right. Coming up next, we got uh, Christian. Like I might have stolen your bet talking about your favorite word, boy. That's what uh, I I was biting my tongue. I was about to jump in the chat there, but you know, new caller, he doesn't know who the energy bit is, so we'll, we'll let that one slide. <laughs> it was good. The energy was good. Like it was, it was palpable. The home crowd has also been really good. Uh, they're six and one at home, as somebody noted in the chat. Thank you for that. I just like I'm I'm just I'm getting a real even grumpy ass me is really getting is really enjoying some of these games. Or I'm not and it's just it's so different in the sense of uh, it's it's like like they're 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 pulling out wins and I'm really just in like I'm enjoying being unhappy. I don't know if that makes sense to anyone. Like Yeah, I I think I mean this game was just a fun game like emotional highs lows uh, KP playing like an actual second star. And, you know, I think one, one of the biggest differences this year is regardless of what we think about the off season, having Jalen uh, kind of step up as a passer and actually KP has been mm. really surprising with some of the passes he's been making like that bounce pass. That was fantastic between him and Luca. Um, we we've added good solid like pieces, and I think Reggie his shots will start falling. Uh, his defense is nice. I mean, Frank, I've been waiting for the shots to stop falling, and it just seems like continuing uh, his previous season with the Knicks last year. He didn't get the volume or the opportunity necessarily, but he was hitting at a good clip. And I think, you know, that's, I mean, we really missed just trying to mix things up last year in the series with the Clippers and having someone like Frank, having someone like Reggie um, being able to, for Jalen to make some passes that he just didn't make last year, I think is, is exciting, but I, I'm interested to think, like, 
do you think KP, now whether he misses games or not, like I, I think we know he's going to miss some games, but do you think this KP is here to stay? Because, I mean, this is kind of like bubble KP these last couple of games. And do you think this movement, uh, this this kind of fight to take smarter shots, to improve, to give effort, to not pout, do you think this lasts the the full season when he does play? And if so, what do you think are ceiling? Man, man, man. This is a tough question because it, it relies on some forecasting, which makes me a little uncomfortable. Um, friend of the show, we're just going to call him friend of the show because I, I, I talk to Zach Lowe every great now and again. Um, he's a really nice man. I, I and, and he said on a NBA show today that like the Mavericks were like his like dark horse finals guy. And he made a point, which is extremely valuable that they're notching wins while not looking correct. Um, I think certain people would probably bristle at the, the looking good or looking, you know, but they're, they're making wins while they're, 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 they're notching up wins while figuring out who they are. Um, so the ceiling on them for me is finals. Like I, I tend to agree with that. The problem is, is it relies on a forecast of Porzingis staying healthy of Porzingis accepting his role and a lot of other things coming together. And that's just really difficult. Um, I do think Porzingis has accepted his role to a degree. The post game interview, uh, from NBA TV, like, at, you know, talk to him about helping Luca and, you know, this is a guy who came here, I'm pretty sure, expecting to be the star. And he's not. And he's struggled with that at times. And he struggled with his health. And I, I think he's still figuring out what that means for him. But he's going to get his accolades if he plays like this. Uh, the difference between bubble KP and pre-bubble KP that we're not really talking about is, like, in in March of in February and March of those that month for like a fifteen game stretch, the dude shot like seventy five percent on post ups. Like he was a machine, but it wasn't a sustainable machine. It was like all long twos, and it was really fun, but it was not really as fine. You know, it's 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 kind of like the outlier performance. What I've seen from him these past two games is sustainable effort. Like he's hitting threes, he's hitting shots at the rim, and he's not taking a ton of mid range. And the mid range that he's not that he's taking aren't garbage can shots. It's like, oh, you know, it, it, it's sort of what, what the Mavericks envisioned whenever Tim Hardaway came to town because Tim took a lot of bad twos before he came to the Mavericks, and now he just kind of takes threes and rim shots, and it's, you know, he's really good. Um, I, I'm, I hate being, you know, it's not in my nature to be super optimistic, but I will say I'm enjoying the hell out of this, and if they can keep this up like they played, the next six games, as we've noted repeatedly, are uh, Phoenix, Phoenix, Clippers, Clippers, uh, Cavs, Wizards. And if you don't know that the Cavs or Wizards are good, then you're not really following the NBA. And if they come out of this stretch three and three, I'm going to be ecstatic because these are good teams. And sometimes you just need to rack up wins against good teams. Yeah, I mean, I, I think especially forecasting with a player like KP is damn near impossible. Um, and I remember when I said, uh, you know, someone – made a post of what's going to, who's going to be your league pass team. And I said, the Cavs and I got like ratioed and people like laughing at it, but you like, they have whether, you know, it's an interesting bundle of talent, but Evan Mobley is just so good. Like he's the real unicorn. Um, and I know uh, he's just so fun to watch defensively, offensively, kind of the nuances. He can just do everything. And, Man, they, they got a bright future. Um, but I think uh, I actually have hope for this uh, six-game stretch. Uh, you know, I think um, I think they're going to want to get some payback on the Suns for sweeping us last year. And then, of course, the Clippers um, down who they are. And kind of it's always a revenge game since. But I, I'm actually really excited about this team uh, right now, which after – the first, you know, few games was was hard, uh, but I I really think that we have a a, a deeper group, um, and you know it, the season just kind of depends on what KP can be. But 
I'm uh, in it for the ride, and I always appreciate you bringing me up, Kirk. I hope you have a good night, and look forward to. All right, thanks, man. Also, I just I need to laugh at this because this is an incredible and very good statement in the chat. Damien notes, "I'm incredibly out, or I'm out on Evan Mobley purely because of Bill Simmons." <laughs> <laughs> Man, that made me laugh and I was on mute. So, yes. Okay. Coming up next, uh, Manuel, what's up? How you doing tonight? Hit that un- unmute button there at the bottom. Okay. I'm here. I'm here. You back up I'm here, here a little. Here. There we go. How you doing? I was getting too many notifications and I could have X out of the discussion. I understand. My favorite thing that happens when I'm on this app is when I get a call from my boss. <laughs> and it, I'm like, oh, no. Oh, my God. Uh, I'm doing good. I'm great after that win. Honestly, it was a really fun game. All in all, it doesn't matter. Like, I didn't care about the – in that respect, it didn't matter the outcome, especially a uh, little bit of a downturn with Luca's injury. But it was a really fun game, and I kind of wanted to hit on – Something that we've hit on a little bit is KP's passing. There was also like a basically like full court pass that he made like out of a rebound that hit right on target. And then that like ended up in like a hockey assist to somebody else for a three or something. And then there was another one where he like got the ball at the free throw line and he got doubled immediately. He sent it to Reggie who was at the wing and then Reggie sent it to the corner. So he also got the That was in the yes. fourth quarter, right? Like that was when yes. they were trying to trap. Yes. Yes, that was a great like that. What, when I mentioned calm earlier, that was the play that was in my head because if Dwight Powell is the role man there, he does something like the crazy Muppet that he is and like throws the ball into the fourth. Yeah, it, it happened a lot this game too. So it was like in our heads, I think, where he would just like get the ball and he would like lose it somehow, whether it be like smacking his hand into somebody else's like foot or smacking his hand into, like, another defender. He would just, like, lose control of the ball. I saw that a couple times. Yeah, I mean, he's he's doing – Porzingis in particular is doing a, a lot of, of things that I I think are, are, are things you can build on um, versus, you know, earlier in the year we've seen Dorian get the opportunity to do some more things, dribbling, passing, short jumpers, posting up. And we have seen that he is a limited player versus Porzingis, who has gotten the opportunity to do a little more in some of these scramble situations. And I just like what he's doing. I, I, I never really was convinced that he could be the short roll man. And some of the things he's been doing when he gets the ball in like that 12 to 15 foot area, whether it's a jumper, whether it's dribbling in for a dunk or whether it's kicking out the backside for the extra pass is just a sn- Yeah, I completely agree. Um, that's all I had today. So if you want to go on to the next caller, that's fine with me. All right. Well, thanks for joining us. We appreciate you. Thank you. Okay. Coming up next, Henry, you've been waiting. What's going on, Kirk? I, too, have our, uh, I'm having a couple cocktails as well. So cheers, brother. Good. Somebody else needs to. I mean, I'm, it's just, you know, it's just some really terrible vodka. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever gets you there, man. Um, real quick, just a couple things. Um, number one, I absolutely cackled when Luca took Jokic to the post and hit that fadeaway over him. Like, even for a guy that wasn't particularly having a great shooting night, the fact that he still had the audacity to do that, like, the guy's a sociopath. Oh my, like he he's an asshole. I love it. <laughs> he he's just he has got to be so. F- <laughs> And then uh, second, I kind of wanted to focus on um, there was a lineup that was played um, to get us back in the game late third, early fourth with uh, it was Brunson, Hardaway, Reggie, Frankie Smokes. And I believe it was Dorian. Yes. Yes. So you were talking about how, you know, the center might have been on the roster all along. I was wondering, like, because I, I don't remember ever seeing that lineup previously. I wonder if that's something new, and if not, like what the numbers look like with that lineup out there. So I am sometimes very terrible about talking about statistics and lineups and this sort of thing, which is why IsTalk 
and Josh and some of the other wonderful people that write for Mavs Moneyball are a part of the staff. So I don't say anything stupid. I will say Josh and I just talked about this and he said that from just sort of anecdotal when he watches this stuff in the games, but he thought that kid went to Brunson earlier than he has been uh, and did some things kind of throughout the game that he's not seen the Mavericks do before, including that lineup and then including the lineup that finished the game because Luka was basically playing power forward on defense, uh, which didn't work out from that one time when Jokic just blew him up. But, you know, it was very difficult to guard on offense. And and they looked – I loved both of those lineups. One, for the fact that they, they were able to buy minutes with, with Dorian at the five. Like, I don't know if they expected to win those minutes, but it was enough to matter, and that was fun. Absolutely, absolutely. And uh, one last thing, uh, you also kind of mentioned something about, uh, you know, you being pissy even uh, with us racking up these wins. And me personally, I think you need to lean into that a little more because, you know, you and Josh are wrestling fans, and you know there's nothing better in wrestling than when there's a heel that tells the truth to an extent. So, like, you guys keep us humble, so... Keep up the great work, Kirk. I appreciate it. Thanks, buddy. Appreciate you coming up. We have a really packed house tonight. Good Lord. Um, all right. Coming up next, we got... Uh, doing well. Um, re- really enjoyed that game. It was the first game that I really felt like I enjoyed kind of the whole way through. Um, yeah. And then, yeah, yeah, someone had mentioned that one play that, that ended up with a Luka catch and shoot three, which is like... And, and that play was impressive. That's something that, like I felt like Ooh. I had not seen from the Mavericks almost ever, and not like and not even just specifically because it was Luca catching it, but just like the way the ball moved is not something that the team has done really in the past. I mean, passing the ball, yeah. and sometimes like that's where Luca having the ball. That's one thing where I, I get some of the criticisms from people that think Luca holds and, and they're right that Luca does hold the ball too much and the ball pops just enough to where it made a difference. And the nuggets didn't know how to defend it. Yeah. I mean, and this game I honestly felt like was even more of a comfortable win than it, the scoreline ended up being um, because for, for all like the bull bull, like bizarre stretch in the first half, like, that's like the best he's ever played for like five minutes in his, in his whole life. Um, and I don't, I, don't I, I like for all, like I, I'll have to go back and look at it, but like, I did not feel like KP like looked even that bad there. Like bull bull just like played really well. And if you take out those couple minutes, like the Mavericks, like they would have been like, they would not have even have even been behind um, really much with the half. Yeah. And you know, it, now that we're far enough into the show, I can say this. The Nuggets were on the – they played at home last night, beat the Trailblazers, and hopped on a plane, lost an hour, and had to play the Mavericks tonight. They're playing, I think, their third game in four nights, which is the NBA. This, this shit happens. The Mavericks are going to have to deal with this this year. I'm very glad the Mavericks won in a convincing fashion because otherwise we were going to have to talk about, hey, are these guys ever going to beat anybody worth a damn? But you know what? You, you know, this was a very solid win. It's, it's something to build upon, and I think something that I'm going to need you guys to remind me of when I lose my shit if they lose to the Clippers like Sunday afternoon or something. Yeah, I mean, and honestly, like with Luca having an injury, this is probably like the if he if it's if he has one of those like one two week like ankle sprains, um, this is like the best stretch probably in which he would have it. Like these are games they will probably lose anyway. Like that was my well, no, I mean, I'm, I've been kind of wrestling with myself in terms of in, uh, what I think are the expectations for this stretch. And because the major, I want to say the majority of, I mean, at least the next four road games, I'm not going to look this up. Um, really, really great hosting for me. Um, but if, if, you know, if we kind of isolate them into the next four against, you know, potential Western Conference playoff teams, if they split these two, it's going to be exciting. If they go one and four, I'm going to be pissed, but it's not going to be the sky is falling. Oh, yeah. Um, if if then you you know if if they're able to show up against yeah. um, the Cavs and against the Wizards, who the Wizards are just like feisty, like it's wild how this happens to Russell Westbrook teams. How all of a sudden they're better when yep. he's not a part of them. Um, I don't know. I, I I'm I'm going to need to think about this the next several days because it's you know 
Jeff Skin, Wade, and Bobby often talk about, and I think they're right about this, about like enjoying the game to game. But for those of us who have been kind of following this team for years, or at least following them on this upward swing, let's just say you're a Luka Doncic fan that joined the Mavericks bandwagon, you are want to see something that they're building towards the playoffs. And despite their record prior to tonight, this was the first win that made me feel like they were building towards something. Does that make sense? I mean, yeah, I mean, definitely, because they're like, like what you're talking about, about like the different lineups they went with. Um, I mean, and like this is the first game in which I felt Kid has that, that I have been impressed by moves he's made in the game and impressed. Yeah, by yeah it was. It was because I think he's been slow to respond and I thought he was yeah. fast to respond tonight. Well, because I think one, there was th- something that frustrated me, like speaking of the Wizards, like if you ever watched like the Wizards back when Wall was on the team when he was good and like he would get, he would think he got hacked and he would like jog back on defense, yell at the refs. Luka did that shit the whole first half and it really annoyed me. Um, like that was probably my, my biggest thing that frustrated me in this game was that he did, he didn't get back. The team didn't get back and they gave up like whatever, a million uh, fast break points. Yeah. Well, we've never really talked about this, but Luka played like shit tonight. Oh yeah. If we're being yeah. honest. I mean, he didn't shoot. He couldn't shoot. Well, I mean, he, he like got a tech. He let the yeah. refs affect his game. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, he gave up. He had like a turnover, like right before, like I think the half break or quarter break or something like that. But 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 with the adjustments, um, like he because in the first half he did this the normal thing with like the centers where he like really high sign played and then KP played and then you know Powell came back in etc. Um, but in the second half Powell went out and did not and reenter the game. He played the first six minutes and then was out. And then he brought Boban yeah. in to face Jokic, which was a smart decision because, I mean, while Boban's not, you know, the best defender against a player like Jokic, he, he is better, a better option than. Or really hard. He has like, he oddly has Jokic's number and it's the sort of, um, this is a terrible analogy. I can't think of a, a better football play, but like, he's kind of the draw play every now and again, where it's just like, Oh wait, what? Because like he scored a basket and he fouled the hell out of, out of Jokic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, those kind of centers are like the play. That's what he needs to play. Um, and like, and, and seeing that and that adjustment did give me hope both for like the rest of the season and the playoffs. And thinking about like when Kleba is back in the rotation, like when he's not injured, um, that those minutes, obviously, like the like Willie Colley sign minutes just go away. Like when Kleba is back, Willie Colley done. God willing, will not play a minute that is not garbage time, um, <laughs> because I just can't stand him. Um, but I mean, but but but, and then with bringing uh, like Dorian Finney Smith, like especially because the, the 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 Nuggets don't have like a backup center, like they they have one real big yeah. guy, Jokic, and so when he's out of the game, it doesn't. And the Mavs don't have other than KP, they don't have like big men who can play against those lineups in any way that like gives you an advantage as a team. And so going to that, like playing like a bunch of wings kind of lineup was the correct decision. And it was like, that's like, it was like an obviously correct decision, but like just seeing that was like. Yeah. Yeah. I I just, I, I don't know. It's the right kind of thing at the right time. You know, I'm, I just, um, I closed the box score, but like, I'm still waiting, you know, like this was a good, like Porzingis kind of return, you know, over correction. I mean, it's five to five to eight from three, but he'd been shooting the three ball pretty poorly. And even Reggie, um, as when noticed, noted this in the chat earlier, where is it? I need to go find it. Um, really good, like statistical marker about, uh, for his career, Reggie Bullock shoots 25% from three in October, 33% November. And the months after that, 42, 38, 43, 37, 46, and 40. So basically he just needs volume to get his, his feel. So, so uh, I think there's some, some, we have some things to look forward to as they figure this out. Yeah. I mean, the same, the same thing is true. Like of, of Luca, like historically as well with the shooting, like just increasingly better from the like from distance as the season goes on. So like, hopefully, yeah, yeah. Well, thank you for joining us as always. Thanks for having me. All right, Get a couple more folks, and then let's go to sleep. Davis, what's up? How you doing tonight? Get that. What's up, Kirk? How are you?
Yeah. Uh, so I'm going to have to disagree with your take on uh, KP's like post January 2020, like January to March. Um, uh, oh, sure. Play. Okay. I think, I think you're actually wrong about his, his post ups there. He wasn't actually from, again, I recall, from what I recall, I watched all those games and he was, he was catching the ball off the move. Um, he was shooting a lot of mid-range shots, but he was getting the mid-rangers that like he can actually make, where he, where he's just catching it and shooting it above smaller players. I remember he he killed like Minnesota a bunch of times that that year, um, just with 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 the type of of movement. And it's really it's about health. I keep seeing on like social media about how oh Jason Kidd's awakened has awoken Kristaps up and motivated him. But no, it's literally he can now move. Like he, he it's a he's a totally different player than he was last year. And last year he had what literally a month after he came back from injury to rehab his leg and he just clearly wasn't healthy. He could not move. He was he had an efficient offensive game in the regular season um because he was basically, you know, He's a great shooter, so he's making his outside shots. Uh, but he wasn't doing much in terms of movement, in the pick and roll. Uh, but now he's healthy. He's making the good reads. And he's I think he's back to his 2019, 2020 self. And hopefully he's um, he can still improve uh, defensively, I think, uh, as he gets his feel for the game. But, I mean, I think this is like a big – step in the right direction for him in terms of health he, he's moving super well and i think um i've been super probably the most pro K, kp person in in uh in the this mavericks community but i've also recognized that he was not healthy last year and he was stuck in the corner in the playoffs because he could not move um so i think it's it's really nice to see him get back to his former self well, my tack going forward is to like I'm trying not to have too high of expectations for him, in that I want to see him play good defense, but kind of this is just the way it is. But like he's not gonna play good defense if his shots aren't falling. Like his 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 effort is so much different after a made basket. <laughs> like you just watch his body language; it's like he's all jazzed up. Um, and, and, and it was, it was really something to, to see, you know, how he's played when he's, when he's feeling well. And, you know, if, if there are going to be games when, when he, you know, gives you nine points and four rebounds. And if the Mavericks win, I don't really care. I, they've got enough guys playing at different points tonight where it was, you know, Luca, this has been kind of understated throughout both Josh and I's podcast and when we're talking tonight, like Luca had a, you know, box counting stats, but he's still nine to 23. He was missing some easy shots. He was bitching at refs and the Mavs won anyways. Like that is not a game they win last year, in my opinion, despite how well they played at times. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, that's partly one because Jalen is just a much better player this year than he was the last couple of years. Um, and, and, and two, right. KP has been better than he has been the last year. And also, I mean, yeah, his Lucas shot has been falling and he had a couple dumb turnovers, but I think he was, he's kind of been back to where he's hitting. He's making those incredible cross court passes, um, you know, right to left, left to right across his body to the corner. Um, and I think players are now just starting to hit those shots, um, uh, better than they were. And what's also encouraging, I think, to see was no, I didn't see a single um, Dwight Powell uh, pick and roll into a KP post up. So that was like the most <laughs> encouraging. This is definitely the most encouraging thing today. It was Weaver Bird. I think there was too much film out there. Like the, <laughs> that was one of those things where it's like even Cuban is seeing it and is probably like, you know, dialing down and being like, hey, I see 47 tweets of people tagging me of KP ending up in the post. What is happening here? Exactly. No, I mean this is the closest our offense our our offense has been to the to what we ran the last three years or two years or, or and in that play with with KP and Luca where KP where Luca passed KP and then Luca, and KP passed it to Luca as he cut. I mean that was 
like just perfect spacing, right? You get Jokic out in space where you got a player in Luca who's cutting and he just can't keep up with Luca, so he loses them. Like that's how we should play. Like if you're gonna have such a such a good shooter in KP at the five, utilize him space the floor. Like that's what creates good offense. Like you don't have this clog in the paint. Like it took a month, but hopefully I pray to God that kid and the coaching staff has finally realized that space spacing just opens the floor up for everybody. And 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 yeah. even if Luca isn't scoring uh, the way he's used to, he can at least create for players if he's given the space to create. Uh, because again, he wasn't that great off that, like scoring wise today, but he still made great passes uh, because he was given the space to make those passes. So again, encouraging and hopefully signs uh, signs for good things to come. Um, and I, I think as long as KP stays healthy, we'll we'll be in competition for uh, at least the second play, second round playoff. Uh, around or maybe even the conference finals, I think so. Well, so anyway, um, sure. honestly, best win of the season, and can finally like sleep as a sleep in confidence that will be actually improves uh, somewhat this season. Right. All right, man. Thanks for joining. Thanks, Appreciate you. All right, Jose, what's happening? Not much, Kirk. How are you? Tired. I got tired. (laughs) Well, I'll try to be quick, but I wanted to give you a special message that I had thought about when I had uh, listened to Bibbs and Reese's uh, recent pod with with Skin. I had thought about how they've been putting in work to get where they are now. And I gave them their flowers on Twitter and I want to do the same thing live to you and give you your flowers for creating a space where us, I guess, uh, outsiders <laughs> like Bibbs and Reese would say, you giving us a space to talk about Mavs openly, whether it's a irrational take or it's something that people could all agree or you know, we might not all agree with everything, but you've given this space and allowed us to share our thoughts and opinions openly. So I want to give you your flowers for that. Thanks, buddy. You know, these are fun to host. I mean, you know, I've hung out with Skin and said hi to him. And, you know, the, the sort of things that go on where there's just a really nasty element that can occur with fandom where people get super pissy online. Um, I'm a I'm a Kansas City Chiefs fan, and the Honey Badger has been taking a ton of heat in, in the city for him being like, our fan base is toxic. And there's a lot to that, and we get this way. I think one of the differences, though, is that for a lot of the people who spend a lot of time on social media is like, it's like being like you're bullshitting with your friends and sometimes things just go way, 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 way too far. And so it's like, like I like doing these because it's like, this is much more productive than like staring at my phone. I mean, I'm still staring at my phone, but I'm talking at my phone as opposed to typing about it. But yeah. So- well, uh, I just want to say that uh, I really like when Dorian stood up for, for uh, Frank. Like I, I, I really, I really love when teammates stand up for each other. I hate when a teammate has an altercation and nobody off the bench is reacting, or nobody on the court itself is reacting. It's like I, I like that that companionship. I, I mean, that, that's something that, like in my area, you you kind of have to have in, in your arsenal because I mean, you're not really getting anywhere if you're just fighting the world by yourself so I, I really like the the Mavs at least having one guy and that that that's something that that I really wanted the Mavs to acquire over the offseason was just a couple more guys with with that mentality that they're not going to take anybody's shit you know all season we know people are going to test Luca. we know people are going to like try to bully Dwight and and KP because they're they're slim guys. <laughs> so I just really like when when somebody just stands up for for somebody on a team. Love it, unbelievable point. Can't believe we've not talked about it to date. 
there's a couple of things I want to, uh, if somebody could do this for me, I, if somebody could go, go to Google and search these keywords, true hoop, all one word, then Dirk David West. There is a story uh, written almost 13 years ago that stuck with me uh, by Henry Abbott of true hoop. Um, and the story is called Dirk David West and revenge. And the story is about how at some point, I can't remember when, but it's like there was a point when David West really, really disrespected the shit out of Dirk and put his hands on Dirk's face. It was a seminal, really bad moment of basically NBA players thinking Dirk was a puss. And none of the Mavs players went to Dirk's defense. It was a travesty and has stuck with me for 13 years. It's one of the things that I, I constantly think about. And uh, thank you, Jason, for posting it in the chat. I want you guys to go read this if you can. It, it's it's incredible. Um, and it talks about just sort of what this stuff means when players stick up for themselves and when they don't. Um, I do want to give Jermichael credit a little or Jermichael Green a little bit of credit because with his off arm, he basically rock bottomed uh, Frank Nilakina, which was pretty dope. Uh, but it, like <laughs> that sort of fight, that sort of, of camaraderie, like these little things matter over the course of the year. And there were times last year where we didn't see it. So I'm really grateful for you bringing this up. Right. And, and that that's something that does stood out to me. I mean, uh, again, like where I'm from, you just don't get very far if you don't have that that type of companionship around you. You you know, uh, a lot of people feel like they could just take on the world by themselves, but you you need a squad, man. And I I just really like seeing that from from our guys. And uh, something that I would also like to add is that the Luca and KP uh, synergy is is on 10 right now. And I'm just hoping that it could just keep, keep building because we have seen what these guys could do together when they're at their highest peak at their best. And it's, it's going to be scary if they could keep it up and the league is going to be questioning how you stop this, these two. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I think we're feeling positive enough at the moment to say that, and, you know, if this team is, is healthy, there's a lot they could do. One of the things Josh and I hit on on a podcast a couple of nights ago was like, well, why can't they just keep running the Luka Porzingis pick and roll? Like, make other teams stop it. One of the things that used to drive me fucking crazy about Rick Carlisle is he would find something that works and would just go away from it because he didn't want players to have or, you know, teams to have too much tape on things. I don't care about that. Get the three seed, get the two seed, get the one seed, win some games, and then we'll figure this out later. You know, like I'm not worried about like playoff tactics at the moment. I'm winning about getting to the playoffs and then advancing, you know? Right. Right. Like uh, that, that's one of the things about the off season is like, are these guys good enough to make an impact in the playoffs? Because we know with Luca we could at least make it there. <laughs> but after we've made it there, can we actually show up in the playoffs? Like when Jason Kidd was talking about how we need to stop uh, taking so many threes and we need to get inside the paint, we need to hit the mid-range. I was like, I kind of agreed with that because it's like I – I see that the three point, like even Timmy in the first half, he was breaking a whole bunch of threes. And I was just like, man, can Timmy just drive to the rim because it'll open up our offense even more? Like Timmy was really good last season driving to the rim, just just being a different factor or being able to to open up the floor a little bit more instead of just dra- jacking up meaningless threes. Yeah, yeah. It, the 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 and one over Bones Highland was fun, and it's like the there's just a lot of little moments in this game that feel like they're things to build off of. Right, right. And one last thing, because uh, I know other people want to talk too, but uh, Jason Kidd stepping in as well, and and uh, talking to Green. That that was something that I really liked to see too, because I know Rick Carlisle probably would have stood way <laughs> away from that altercation. But that's all I got for you, Kirk. Thanks for bringing yeah. me up. Sure thing, buddy. You have a good night. Okay, coming up next, got a couple more people. Jim.
got him. Got you. Not much, man. How are you doing? I'm all right. Yeah, I kind of wanted to jump. I'll jump off of Jose because I was going to say something about Jason Kidd. Not so much that that moment, but uh, I think you see like the respect when they talk about the relationships that Jason Kidd had. Because if you notice quickly when he stepped in, Jamichael just calmed down. I mean, because it was yeah. that was something different. I mean, I, I you know, and that's probably one of the reasons Rick Carlisle wouldn't have got in there because I don't think he would have had that kind of respect with the players. You know, it's an interesting thought. I don't know. I mean, I do know that these guys realize that if they fight, they lose a lot of money. <laughs> yeah, I know. But I just said that he was really up. And then Kid got in there and it was like, all of a sudden, it was like, well, wait a minute. You know, it was a change in mood. But uh, what? Yeah. Well, I mean, that's the sort of kid argument for why the Mavericks wanted to bring him in over the long term is like, despite his coaching record, there's still a lot of people that really like him. So. I want to I want to say something a little bit alternate about Kid as well. Uh, you know, him and Kakoskov they've been taking a taking it on the chin a lot about their offensive system so much. But you know, really, the only thing an offensive system can do is get you open shots, makeable open shots. And I heard this on a podcast the other day, and I went and looked it up myself. And if you look at the Mavericks' offense this year, as far as wide open shots, we're about twelfth in the league, and that's and we have more wide open shots per game than we did last year. And then if you go down to open shots, we are number one in the NBA per game in open shots. So when I know Kid says well, we were just not making the shots and all that stuff, and and we've kind of gotten frustrated with him about that. But if you look at the data, to me that's saying he's right. I mean, if we get most of the most open shots, like four to six feet open, and then plus six, we're twelfth, and we're more, and both of those numbers are more than we had last year per game. He may be right, and mm-hmm. we're just not hitting the shots, and that's been the problem. Well, my I mean, that's counter, fair. That's that, that's data. That's I mean, I can't you can't make that. I can't. I no, no, that they're, one, they're right, but it's who is taking the shots. Like Dorian is taking a ton of open shots, and the poor well, guy, fair too. big yeah, picture, right. has not been able to hit a broadside of a barn. But you know, there's gonna be, you know, Porzingis is a good example. And tonight was a great example of this. There was like positive regression with him for hitting open threes. Like he hit five of eight. Like those sorts of things are just going to sort of come around over time. Um, I do think that's where, you know, I talked about this with a fan during the game. I get that Dorian and Powell are a key part of this team's um, kind of underlying identity, but that doesn't necessarily mean playing them at the same time helps. And tonight was a good example of that. It's, it, Powell's really kind of the the really troublesome one. I think, like, I, I want to see Dorian as the, like, I want to see, you know, Brad Townsend wrote this piece that I just flat out disagree with because I think it's mischaracterizing the argument. Fans don't want to see Reggie Bullock in place of Dorian Finney-Smith. Fans want to see Reggie Bullock in place of Dwight Powell and slide uh, uh, Dorian down, is my opinion. Yeah. What do you think? Well, I, I kind of agree with that. I think the if you think what was it uh, three or four years ago, or maybe even a little bit more, but you had Dwight Powell and you had Maxi and you had Dorian, and they were all making up the second unit, and that was a great second unit. And I mean, then they had some injuries and stuff like that. But when we get the roster that pushes those three into the second unit, that's when we really start to look good. And when you think about somebody like like Frank, and you've got you know, um, Jalen and you got, you got Bullock and you got Brown and you've got a lot of options there, but when you push those three down, if you get enough on the roster to push those three down in the second unit, then we look really good at that point. That's why I we agree. In depth. I mean, the, the, the line of versatility at the moment, even without, uh, Maxi feels nice. Um, because you, I, I wasn't, yeah. Frank is the sort of guy, Frank Nelkina is the sort of guy you have to find, every third season if you're a good team. A guy that was basically discarded and needs a second chance. Um, and, and and he's really added to that depth just enough while Bullock figures out what, you know, what this team's doing. Like, Bullock, I, I don't have the stats in front of me, but Reggie Bullock's numbers last year, he was assisted almost, it was a ton. It was over 75% of his jumpers. And this year he's doing a ton of dribbling. I'm like, what is happening? And what's happening is he's figuring out his role. And they're winning anyways. As everyone else is figuring things out, they're winning anyways. Now, part of that is their schedule, as we're about to find out the hard way. But, you know, who cares? Like, wins are wins. And that's why tonight really felt validating, I think, um, for both people who think that I'm an idiot. And then for me personally, as, as in, in terms of 
I just want to see them get a, a, a key win. Like I want reasons to believe in this team. And I hear it like, like what you said about the, the data that's existing. There is an argument for it where it's just like, all right, if things kind of go their way a little bit, they're going to be better. Yeah. Yeah. I, I just think that's the, that's really all I've got, man. I just want to throw that out. So I'll leave it. Sure, with you thanks guys. for joining. Appreciate you. No worries. All right. Have a good night. Let's see. Here. We've got a couple more folks. Josh, what's up? Ah, uh, unmute. Got there it. There we go. Unmute. Yeah, no, it, it, it was moving around. Well, hallelujah, we beat a team that's actually good. <laughs> I was, I was so nervous. I was watching the game at a bar here in Chicago, and having outbursts at the bar, which was, which, which was cool. That's fun. I. I... <laughs> it, was, it was it was awesome and I, I just felt so relieved um not very relieved to see the the luca ankle thing but hopefully it's just nothing yeah um i've not really seen anything either way kp seems a little positive um even if they take a game i don't know it's just it's so, he's such a big person that anytime ankles go awry like we've watched it with lebron just there's a lot of ankles are just dicey so we'll see my my little mini take um on on going forward is um if these lineups keep diversifying we may get to see the dallas maverbachers lineup sure yeah the all like an all next lineup is something i think we need just, just for pure troll. Like, not only, but they need to also play against the Knicks. Like, that would be very, like, an all Knicks lineup against the Knicks is something that must happen. <laughs> um, Frank, Frank looked, um, Frank looked really good today. He did. I, I like his play every game because I don't expect him to hit shots. And if he does hit shots, then it's a bonus. Everything else he does is just, he's like a chaotic. Yeah. Uh, uh, I was really, uh, I was really psyched. I was also really psyched to see um, <clears throat> Hardaway come with uh, come with some ferocity and swag in the in the in the towards the end of the game. And I really think that that was a big part of it. A little weird to see Chris Stapps being just so psyched in the post game interview, um, but I get it. It was like a breakout game for him, and. Uh, you know, I'm just crossing my fingers and toes that he stays healthy and, and that way he can keep being um, that excited. Yeah, yeah. He's – KP's easily the best media savvy person on the entire team. He understands. He's thoughtful. Um, he, he knows how his interviews are taken. And I, I was – I liked his – like he's just such – when he's pissy, his body language is just so clear – and he's, you know, for, for last year, the joke was the vibes are immaculate. And it's like, well, the vibes were mostly immaculate. And now I think, like, things are pretty good. I mean, they've, they've like, they, they've, they're not even really clicking and they're winning. It's got to be, you know, that's the argument that Dalton Trigg always bitches me about when I'm, when I'm being grumpy. He's like, like, they're, they're not even looking great. And they're winning, like, they're 9-4. It's like, yeah, you're right. You're right. Yeah, I mean, I mean, but I agree with you. In the sense that I, I listen to his podcast and and he seems awesome, but yeah, I mean he's also irrationally positive because they haven't until tonight they didn't really beat anybody and when they lost to good teams they lost really brutally and they didn't. Oh yeah, I mean I, I had somebody tell me today, I can't remember what the guy's handle was on Twitter. But he's like, yeah, I posted that next the next seven games including this one. He's like, anything less than six and one is unacceptable. I'm like, we, does anyone not realize that we've yet to beat a team above 500? Like. I'm not being an ass. Like this is something that is true. And now that they've gotten that monkey off their back, I feel better about the future ones. Yeah. Well, you know, we're about to go up against the Suns and and find out about um, a little more about this Mavs team. And uh, uh, I'll let I'll let you get on with the other callers. But I agree with Jose. Um, you deserve your flowers. This is this is a really cool forum. Um, so I'm psyched. And thanks again. 
Sure thing, Josh. Appreciate you joining us again. All right. Uh, last but not, oh, hey, there's nobody else here. Um, trying to think. We'll see if we have some posts. Um, it's funny. We're hitting like the, you know, the 12 to 15 game mark. And though we got a lot of people at Mavs Moneyball, everybody's just like kind of tired. <laughs> and then we have the holidays coming up. But, you know, I, I, I'm sure that somebody will write something else about this game. There's a lot of really interesting elements. I mean, hell, we've talked about it for an hour. Looking forward to see what we can do. Um, this has been Kirk Henderson, Mavs Moneyball. Please check out our site. Uh, this will be going up Tuesday afternoon. Uh, we'll, then we'll have a, a post game pot after the first Suns game. And then another green room, of course, later in the week, I'm going to do an interview with, um, Clippers SB nation, uh, kind of site editor. She does a ton of stuff for a lot of, uh, of California based sites, uh, Sabrina merchant who follows the Clippers along with another, a number of uh, teams out there. So we have that to look forward to. We'll see if I can sneak anything else in during the week because I like talking to people. Uh, Zach just asked in the chat, bring Dalton on the next show. I may be going on Dalton's show tomorrow. So we'll see. All right, folks, this has been wonderful as always. Appreciate you hanging out and tell your friends so we can make this a really, really large room. Talk to you guys soon. Today's episode is brought to you by cars.com. With over 2 million vehicles and 50,000 more added every day, Cars.com will match you with the perfect car for you, your budget, your life, your style. And if you're ready to say goodbye to your current car, Cars.com will get you an instant offer to cash it in. Just start by entering your license plate and get matched with a local dealer who will write you the check. So whether you're looking to buy or sell, just go to Cars.com. It's magical.